Midday Magazine for this March 28th, 2024. You have your host, James J. Mailoff here, and we're welcoming into the studio our good friend, Anna Mitchell. Anna, good to have you with us. <laughs> good to have you, too. Or, it, good to have you, too. Good to be here, James. <laughs> did it sound a little weird hearing it, your name like that? I mean, it threw me off a little. We should let the audience know that it, that, <laughs> name, that name sounds a little familiar. It's because Anna has been with us many times as Anna James. Yep. But uh, congratulations, Mazel Tov, to you Thank and yours. You. Very happy for you. And you. very happy to have you in studio, Anna. Um, one of the things we love about joining you joining us is not only do we learn, but we get a chance to really dive into topics we don't always get a chance to. And today we're going to be getting into invasive species. Mm-hmm. So what is an invasive species just to begin with? Yeah, so Wisconsin DNR defines invasive species as non-indigenous species whose introduction causes or is likely to cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. Mm -hmm. But basically, an invasive species is any species that's brought to an area that it doesn't originally come from, Mm -hmm. Um, so where it's non-native to. Now, I'm I, I just, and I don't know nearly yeah. what you do, but yeah. knowing a little bit about nature and learning more and more all the time, especially from people like yourself, mm-hmm. uh, these things can happen in nature quite often, yeah. but it's a difference of it happening and, uh, and, and then it happening and causing problems. Yes. Yeah. So invasive species, I mean, in their... In their native environment, um, invasive species have natural predators and competitors that mm-hmm. keep their populations in check. It's like a system of checks and balances, mm-hmm. right? But when you take a, a species out of their native habitat and put them into a different habitat where they have no natural predators mm-hmm. or competitors, they they just thrive. Like yeah. they just multiply really, really rapidly and it becomes an issue for the the species that are native to those areas. They, mm-hmm. they just the invasives can tend to just take over and really, really rapidly just there's nothing keeping their populations in check. Yeah. So uh, which is such an integral part of nature. Yeah. Things oh, yeah. to keep things in check. Yeah. It, it's such an interesting thing. Uh, but when you take a step back and look at nature, so much of it is balanced on that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's just checks and balances the whole system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now uh, they can. Uh, they can. This can also it can Im- impact economic value. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Which is pretty wild. We'll talk about that um, kind of some specifics, especially to Wisconsin, in a little bit. Um, but invasive species not only alter the ecological relationships um, and disturb the natural ecosystems, but in fact, 42 percent of of species that are on the threatened or endangered species list, they are there because of some threat that an invasive species species has caused, which, I mean, f- that's almost half of the species on your threatened or endangered species list. Um, this is why I, I love talking with you. Yeah. But this is why it's so vital we talk right. to you. I cannot be the only one that's learning that. Right. That that uh, I, I you, uh, just for the audience to look behind the curtain a little bit. Anna sends these notes to yeah. us, and I have a chance to kind of go over them, so I know a little bit of what we're talking about, and I can help with the conversation. Yeah, I read that five <laughs> times when I re- when I saw that I couldn't get over that. Yeah. It, I, I know that many many, if not almost everybody out there, cares about endangered animals and right. doesn't want to see any of these animals uh, on our watch go out. Right. Uh, you know. Um, right. When you hear a stat like that, it brings everything really full circle. Yeah. It really does. And it just really, that took me like 42%. <laughs> That's amazing. Right, right. And it's 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 a good stat to know because a majority of invasive species become invasive because of human interaction, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, us humans have created just conditions where plants and animals can ag- aggressively invade and dominate natural areas and water bodies, too. And um, there's three major ways that invasive species can be introduced. So, uh, well, the first way is just introducing exotic species from other regions. Mm-hmm. So, for example, uh, we have a lot of ornamental gardens. Mm. Uh, and those plants are generally not from our region. Yeah. I, I mean, they're flashy, they're showy, and so we tend to gravitate towards those for like our lawns mm-hmm. and our flower beds. Um, but when we introduce those species to an ecosystem that they're they're not mm-hmm. native to, that they then become an invasive species, especially if they're not managed and, t- and looked after. When I was uh, spending time in California, one of the ways I learned about their ecosystem out there and a lot of their, their culture out there is is from this, is from invasive yeah. species. They, they'll they have a seed from Europe float mm-hmm. over and land there. And, yeah. and this ha- kind of thing happens all, it's happened for th- thousands of years. Yep. Uh, it's crazy. 
Yeah, it is. It's it's really crazy. And the same thing happens in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. same thing yeah. happens all over. Um, and then there's the, another way that us humans are really good at spreading invasive species is just disrupting the delicate balance of NATO, native ecosystems by changing the environmental conditions. So for example, um, fire is really important to a lot of landscapes. We think about forests, mainly prairies. Well, we suppress fires mm. as humans, right? A, a fire uh, is bad in our eyes when we see it burn across a landscape, mm. but there's benefits to fire. So be- before settlement for yeah. us right yeah. they're they're fire burned across a landscape and there's actually native plants that need fire in order to germinate mm. and so when we suppress that fire we're not allowing specific plants to germinate and then the fire isn't suppressing other plants either so you see an overpopulation of maybe an invasive or maybe even uh, overpopulation of a native which mm-hmm. I mean, it wouldn't technically be an invasive mm. if it's taking over a prairie, but because it's so dominant, it's, right. it's you know, hindering the, mm. the germination of others. That's got to be a tricky one to be able to deal with oh, uh, yeah. because we certainly we can't have out, out of control fires. Correct. But it's also so important for fire. So yeah. that's a tough one to balance just in, as a world, as a, a society. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Uh, and, and the spreading of these, uh, the activities of, of these invasive species continues, too, with uh, recreational activities. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, a lot of what we love to do in Wisconsin is outdoors. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what our state is sold on, yeah, right? Our yeah. outdoor recreational mm-hmm. opportunities. Well, if we don't do those with care and with intention, we can be spreading invasive species. So just for example, if your boating is huge in Wisconsin, right? Mm-hmm. Any water activity, if you have a boat and you're moving it from water body to water body and you're not taking the vegetation off of the trailer mm-hmm. when you're moving it, and, and that is a really good way of spreading invasives or even draining out the water that's in your boat, taking the plug out before you leave. Yeah. Um, and then when we mow along the roadsides, a lot of the times, if those mowers aren't cleaned off or just blown off, you're moving seedlings mm. from one spot to another. Man, wouldn't yeah. have thought about that one. Yeah, yeah. The boat thing, I remember doing that, especially as a kid. Uh, we, we'd hose yep. down the boat before we moved it uh, from yeah. Camelot or something yep. like that. Yep. Uh, I hadn't thought about the mowing thing. Yeah. Wow, that yeah. is that is a different one. That's a difference maker. It, huh. it is. And well, there's some other scenarios we'll talk about. But if you like to camp and you see signs that say, please don't bring in firewood. Mm-hmm. I wonder, I know some people are like, that sounds really odd. Is mm-hmm. that just a gimmick to make us buy their firewood? Right. No, it's not. It's actually a way to decrease the spread of invasive species. Wow. If you're bringing in firewood from home, say a different region of the state, that firewood could have invasive species. And you could be introducing it to a somewhat delicate and well-managed system in, say, a county park or a state park. Mm -hmm. So that's why they tell you to only use the firewood that they have or the firewood within a 10-mile radius of the campsite. You know, it seems like uh, uh, so many of these things are fixable, are, mm-hmm. are doable. Some mm-hmm. of it is self-inflicted, right. um, but also stuff that uh, isn't common knowledge. So I, right. I, I imagine yeah. that a lot of people are doing these things and not realizing it and would like to, to uh, you know, uh, fix them, yeah. for lack of a better way yeah. to put it. Yep. You just don't know what you don't know. Now, when it, exactly. Uh, when it comes to dealing with these and, and why we should care about them, Anna, mm-hmm. can we get into the details of why we should care about invasive species? Yeah. So there's there's three large areas or three reasons really why we should care about invasive species. And the one that I think is going to hit home the most is just the economics behind mm-hmm. it. So in the United States, expenses associated with invasive species damage and control were estimated at $137 billion Ooh. in 2001. Oh. That's 2001. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it's just since increased. I mean, $137 billion because of invasive species. With, uh, I mean, inflation is a, is a factor every yep. year in, in history. So there's that to consider. And then the 2001 aspect of that. I, I wasn't sure if it was a typo or not. No, no, no. no. <laughs> that's, that's, that really speaks to a lot. Yeah. That, that number has only gotten bigger <laughs> over the over the last decades. Yeah, yeah. And then hmm. if we bring it to a Wisconsin perspective, we have industries like commercial fishing, forestry, agriculture, industrial water users, um, our industrial water treatment plants, uh, plant you know, municipal water users, those are also negatively impacted by invasive species. Mm. Um, And just one to bring into perspective, our commercial uh, sport and commercial fishing industries are huge in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Um, 
in the Great Lakes, they're valued at $4.5 billion and support over 81,000 jobs in Wisconsin. Um, And these industries, we see them at risk due to increasing numbers of invasive species that are present in our water. Um, So a great example of an invasive species uh, in our waters, especially our Great Lakes, are round gobies. Um, These fish these round gobies they eat the eggs of sport fish like smallmouth bass Mm, or mm. trout and even sturgeon so Mm. because they have no natural predator right Mm. they can go through and just make food for (laughs) make food out of anything they find Mm. so yeah they're dealing with this a lot in florida right now Mm -hmm. uh especially in the southern tip of the state Mm -hmm. and everything with uh sharks or animals that they've never seen come close to land before are now starting to Uh, and that's not necessarily an invasive species thing but it's becoming an invasive species thing because of these animals traveling from different spots uh there's a lot of different uh, places around the country around the world that are dealing with uh, some things like this well the florida everglades just thinking about florida and they have huge invasive species issues yeah, with yeah. pythons. I mean, it's become a whole... Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about this. You're right. Yeah, Whoa, yeah pythons yeah. and some iguanas just from... I can't remember which hurricane it was. Yeah. Yep, I can't remember which hurricane it was, but it wiped out a, a reptile, mm-hmm. I don't know, breeding facility. And so all of these pythons got introduced to the Everglades. People are actually making careers out of taking people out to hunt these wow, invasives yeah oh, yeah wow, it's actually really that. cool yeah it. it's huh. it's cool so it's interesting it, it and, is. And, and it's one of those things that i i bring up in part just a you know it's not just a wisconsin thing mm-hmm. other other states are certainly dealing with things oh, yeah. like this it also lets you know that you're not alone and that these things can be fixable yeah. it, it, again for lack of a better word I, I feel weird saying when it comes to nature saying fixing right. <laughs> you know, nature's right. doing its thing i don't i don't want to uh, but it, it is sort of a lack of a better way to put it kind of getting things back in balance if it was human caused i think it can be human fixed well said <laughs> very well said um and in to, uh, just another example of how this affects our state. Uh, in 2001, the electric company had uh, Wisconsin Electric Company had some uh, details on this. Yeah, so in 2001, they had actually the Wisconsin Electric and Power Company reported that they spent 1.2 million dollars per year trying to control zebra mussels, hmm. which are an aquatic invasive, hmm. um, on their Lake Michigan power plants because the small zebra mussels they congregate and on and clog their intake and distribution pipes. Hmm. So. That's insane. And, yeah. and, and not the kind of things that we, I think, would hear about or know about uh, very mm-hmm. often. Um, it also speaks to these kind of stories being covered a little bit more, yeah. I think. I think that they should be brought up a lot more and yep. covered a lot more. Yeah. This affects our health as well. Yeah. You, we talked about the economic impact, now the health impact it has on us. Yep. So some invasive species can cause, uh, can be caused for major health concerns in humans. So, for example, in Wisconsin, we have a plant called wild parsnip, and mm. it's grown in, uh, it grows a lot in disturbed areas like our ditches, uh, along trails, and it's got this really big yellow umble head on it Mm. so it looks like an umbrella that's why they Mm. call it an umble well actually if if you get the sap of this plant on you and on your skin and it's exposed to the sunlight it's photoreactive so if Mm. it's exposed to the sunlight you blister and you blister bad like there's been cases where people have been sent to the hospital because they blister so bad so Mm. yeah i mean that's just and uh, I guess another example in Wisconsin is we see the Lone Star tick mm. more mm-hmm. often, and mm-hmm. that's generally found in our southern states. Yeah. But when we see it up here, if you get a tick bite from a Lone Star tick, sometimes um, you can get uh, alpha gal syndrome, which is a food allergy to red meat. Oh, it causes God. a food allergy to red meat. Yeah. That, that's now that's not that ain't right. <laughs> That ain't that ain't fair, ticks. Like you've gone too far. You've gone too you're far, correct. ticks. Yeah. But, um, but that that is really like that's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for one, just to hear that an allergy like that exists is quite interesting. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah. But also that this is something in our state again. Not sure that it's uh, common knowledge and not enough people know about that. Right. We know there's ticks out there, but different breeds. Let alone that some of them were kind of introduced to our state. That's very right. interesting. Right. We're speaking with Anna Mitchell, UW Madison Division of Extension's Natural Resource Educator. Anna, let's, as we're touching on the ways that this invasive species affect us, the natural ecosystem is, of course, another big one. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so like we had said before, invasive species tend to disrupt our natural communities and the ecological processes within our natural communities. So we discussed how the round gobies dis- uh, disrupt the food web in some of the Great Lakes. Um, and invasive species can also displace native species mm-hmm. due to how um, they tend to just decrease diversity. Mm-hmm. So when we have, uh, so not to mention the forestry industry is mm-hmm. huge huge within mm-hmm. Wisconsin. I think it was almost a hundred thousand jobs that were wow. that were generated by the forestry industry. Um, but we are seeing um, plants like honeysuckle and buckthorn, which are invasives, mm-hmm take over in some of our forests and those plants uh, on the understory so like the shorter part of the forest floor um, they will just grow so so thick which Mm. makes it really hard for our native saplings and the Mm. the young trees to grow Mm. and to flourish Mm. so those those um I mean, even plants like that are disrupting disrupting the ecosystem or the mm. web of of our natural forests. Which is very interesting. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the the so the net uh, result of this. Yeah. So the net result of invasive species is just a loss of diversity of our natural plants and animals because invasive species rapidly multiply and they mm. dominate areas like our forests, grasslands, wetlands, and water bodies. So just a net result is a loss of our native species with um with a topic like this on i think with a lot of topics nowadays people hear all this information they're good people they're Mm -hmm. taking it in and they care but they have no idea what to do after that because it's such a big topic it It, it could be so hard to handle i i I remember growing up i hated cleaning my room i'm a neat freak (laughs) but i hated cleaning my room i didn't mind cleaning the rest of the house and especially because i i was a a typical you know boy Mm -hmm. i I had a crazy room messed Mm -hmm. up all over the place Mm -hmm. uh, you know cereal bowls that kind of thing um um, when it was time to clean, I would break it down. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get the dishes out first. Oh, I'm going to get the animals out of here first because mm-hmm. there's a lot of wild animals in there. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but you know, this is how we take on big issues. Yeah. We break them down a little bit. Yeah. So when it comes to what we can do, what can we do? Yeah, well, we'll break it down. Yeah. We'll break it down yeah. into three yeah. parts. Yeah. First of all, just learn. Take the time to research what invasive species are in Wisconsin. Get to know how to identify them so that if they're on your property, you can properly manage them. The DNR website, Wisconsin DNR website, has really great resources for invasive species. Just a plug for UW Extension. We have really wonderful resources mm-hmm. as well. You can actually look at all of our invasive species in Wisconsin, and there's a fact sheet on those species, on how to control them, how they're introduced, how to identify them, if there's any harm like to our health from them. So there's some really great resources out there. And all you have to do is Google Wisconsin <laughs> invasive yeah. species. Yeah. And then the other one is just take action. If, if you're taking the time to learn then be intentional about what you're learning and take action. So we, we talked about if you are using a watercraft, make sure to pull the plug on it before you, right after you load the boat, pull the plug. I've got a boat. Mm-hmm. That's like the first thing that yep. I make sure is done. We pull the plug and we make sure that all of our, all, all of our trailer is clean from mm-hmm. any aquatic plants. Cause we don't know if they're invasive or not. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to spread them. Right. If, I mean, if you're camping, Take care to buy firewood within 10 mile radius of your campsite. There's a, there's a, if you're a landowner or a gardener, try to use native plants as much as possible. We have beautiful native plants. Yeah. Educate yourself on what the native plants are mm-hmm. and the benefits that they have to our ecosystems mm-hmm. and plant those. And then just be an advocate. Yeah. If, if you're learning about it and you're taking action, don't just keep that to yourself. Mm-hmm. Advocate for those to your neighbors, your friends, your family. Share what you learned, share what you're doing. Just be passionate about it so that other people can become passionate or even curious about it. uh, Especially with the way that Anna has broke this down, this whole topic for us down, that uh, when it comes to reaching out to people and being an advocate, you've got your notes. Mm -hmm. You've got your, okay, well, this person cares about the economy, so I can bring up this and how invasive species affect the economy. This person cares about our health, so talking about that part of it. Uh, You've given us all the tools (laughs) uh, to be able to be advocates and be able to really promote and talk about this more. And um, the more, again, it's one of those topics that can seem so big. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, you can't fight nature, but we can work with nature. Yes. We can yeah. work with nature, and that's yeah. what we need to be doing. Not fighting it, nope. working with nature. Because yeah. uh, one, we'll never win no, if we did try correct. to fight it. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> right. uh, but it also, it, it makes for a better world, a more, uh, the symmetry, the, the mm-hmm. way that we work together, nature, mm-hmm. human beings, it only works if we all work together. Right. And it's on us to be able to do this. Right. Nature's doing their thing. It's right. doing its job. We got to do ours. Are we going to be part of the ecosystem? Are we going to be an integral part, a beneficial part, a positive part? What role are you going to play? Mm-hmm. Well said, as always, Anna. <laughs> uh, and we always appreciate the time, always learn from you. Uh, thank you so much for being in with us today. If people have follow-up questions and want to know some more about some of the things we've dove into, mm-hmm. how can they reach you? You can stop in at the Wood County Extension Office or you can email me at anna.m.james at wisc, W-I-S-C dot E-D-U. Uh, again, uh, congrats to you and yours. Thank you so uh, much. Really happy for you. Thanks, and James. Really appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Looking yep. forward to hanging out again real soon. Yep, as am I. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. And we'll have more Midday Magazine for you tomorrow right here on 97.5 FM, 1320 AM WFHR. We are Locally Grown Radio.